All right, I wanted to do a quick example on the fundamentals of the .env uh, file in node.js. So I'm just going to start by kind of spinning up an empty uh, node project. And I'll call it uh, .env. Uh, empty folder, and we'll open this in VS Code. And so that's the editor of choice. And we can kind of see an empty folder here. Uh, I'll spin up an index.js, which we will use, so I can talk a little bit about what is the .env and what is an environment variable. So I'm gonna just start off with some comments, and as I zoom in, um, just to talk about some real quick theory, what is uh, an environment variable? And you could define that as an environment variable are variables, obviously variables hold data that are set outside of your software, outside of your program. And so, you know, in this class, one example of that, and we'll go over the common examples, is a connection string to your database. So your, your program uh, needs to connect to a database and that connection string is given to you by the database provider. And so a database connection string is one example of a, of a value, of a variable, piece of data that is set outside of your program. That value is set by, well, either Mongo or SQL Server or MySQL, uh, et cetera. Um, another thing that environment variables do for us is that they keep your application secure. Okay, what you're gonna do is you don't wanna hard code passwords, you don't want to hard code connection strings or sensitive information um, by taking those values out of your source code and into a kind of a secure file, right? So, so that's what environment variables are. They're variables set uh, by other, you know, entities outside of your program. And it's a security thing. Okay, and examples uh, of common environment variables, okay, uh, database URLs, URIs, API keys, debugging flags. Uh, you guys might remember we made like a debug channel and we said that, hey, our debug channels can all start with the word app, you know, and then any wildcard after that. Uh, configuration settings. So these are just kind of the common things. Now, um, Hey, it's 2024, and in 2023 I taught this class, and things have changed. Things have changed since last year um, because we, and you guys have already done this, in this class uh, had to use a dependency called .env. I mean, you guys went to the NPM registry, you looked up the .env dependency, we went to the terminal, we did npm install .env. Um, that has changed. As of last fall, uh, Node version 20.6 was released. And I remember reading about this, but I just didn't bring it into the class until now. Um, now there's actually built-in ENV support. So we don't even need uh, the .env package anymore. Uh, we can just actually um, work with .env files um, built into Node, and I'm going to show you um, how to do that. Now, as an example of what this used to look like really quick, I've got a, a sample thing that we've been working on here in class, and I can open up my package JSON. So just to give you a feeler of what it used to take to work with .env, it was always a process. And, and you guys have seen me kind of like, okay, stumble through this process, you know, there's three or four steps um, in this process. And, um, you know, you got to remember. So the first part of the process was to install the .env uh, dependency. So you can see in my package JSON, we, we ran that install command. The next thing that we did was on our scripts. We had to say, hey, when we run this script, you know, don't forget to bring in .env slash config. So you needed this switch here um, to kind of bring in the .env file when you run this script. So that was kind of the second step. The third step was several lines of code. We needed to bring it into our, uh, we needed to import it, and then we needed to run this config method. Okay, and all of that, after those steps, I guess, you know, when you're just showing those steps, there's not so many, but 
um, you had to remember to do each one. When you did that, you could then access this global process. And this global process object uh, kind of gives you information from node. And then you had this env object, and there was a, uh, a variable called port that we configured inside of our .env file. Okay, so that was the old process, and now what I'm going to do is the new process. And so uh, the new process is much easier. What I'll do is I'll just boot up a basic Express server by kind of glancing at the Hello World Express app. Okay, and I'm going to um, start by opening up a terminal real quick, and we need to initialize our... Uh, package JSON npm init minus y is going to kind of hot fill all of the default answers and make our package JSON. And then inside of our package JSON, uh, let's go ahead and install Express. So that's the only dependency that we need now. npm i express. Okay, so we no longer need to install that dot env. And then uh, now that we got the theory out of the way. Let's import express from express. And in order to use the ES modules, we need to remember to go into here and change our type to modules so that we can use this import. And then I'm just gonna paste the boilerplate express app that doesn't do a whole lot for us besides uh, set a port to 3000 and then a hello world message. Um, okay, so now we should be able to run, by the way, do a node minus V to make sure you at least have 26 uh, uh, and use a node version manager and VM uh, to change your versions if you don't have, you know, install the latest version of node. Um, so definitely check your version for this to work. And if, if it's an old version, older than summer of 2023, you're going to need to update. Um, and so let me glance at something. Um, so yeah, we, we can just make a dot env file now. And there's only one step in the process. So now the convention, so this is kind of weird. The convention for environment variables is, um, uh, all caps. And so, you know, my API, or just say, you know, um, whatever, API key, API key. So this is our variable identifier. We get to name it, and the convention is all caps with underscores. And um, you could put my super secret API key. So the identifier on the left, the value is on the right. And there is one... to get this to work, there is one flag that you have to make. So I'm gonna make a, a script. I'm just gonna call this my start script. Don't forget your comma over here. And my start script is gonna run node index.js. Don't forget your colon. And the one switch to get your env file, we just say, minus minus env hyphen file is dot env. Okay, so this is definitely less steps to get this to work. You notice I'm not importing the package, I'm not running some config method. And then just by doing that, so again, kind of going back to the terminal, obviously you guys know if I say node index.js, um, oh, I already have something running on 3000, so I can terminate that or just change my port to 3001. Okay, app listening on port 3001. So you know how to run an express server just by running the node command. Um, but we also have a script, npm, that we just created. We run a script with a start command, uh, our, our npm run start. Okay, now if I do that, that's the result. And if I boot up a browser and go to the root on 3001, 
uh, local host 3001. Okay, we respond with the default route. Um, let's change this. Okay, I'm gonna do a little uh, string interpolation. And now we can access process, just like before, env. And now we have access to our environment variables. Our one variable is API key. And that should send our API key to the browser. Um, I would say, or if for whatever reason, we'll say API key not set. So this is kind of a, if this is truthy, it'll respond with the API key. If, if that doesn't have a value, it'll send back a string API key not set. Um, I'm not running nodemon here, so I'll, I changed my source code, so I'll break out of it. And npm run start script, listening on 3001. And if I open up my browser, go to localhost, uh, local host 3001. This is obviously the value that was stored in my variable. Um, so yeah, that's a quick one. I just wanted to go over some theory around what is this, what is this .env file? Why are they beneficial? Why are they used? Um, one last piece that I'll add on here you do not want to put this anywhere public. You put sensitive information in here. And so uh, it is considered a security risk to put this on your GitHub. For that reason, for that reason, you want to include your .env file in your git ignore. Okay, if I kind of go into this, this uh, project right here, if I open this folder, you could see I've got this file called git ignore. No file name, there's only a file extension and that file extension is exactly dot git ignore, can't have any typos. And what this does is it says, hey, what files should I not put online on github.com? If I take a look at this, I've got one file in here. I say ignore my dot env. Um, because I do not want to put this in a public repository where people can see my passwords and my super secret API keys and all my sensitive data, right? Um, and, and in fact, it's such, it's such a secure thing that if you do put a, a .env on, on a public repo, uh, you're going to get some messages from github.com that you're screwing up, right? So, so that's considered... Uh, um, a bad practice that's why you don't put that on a public repo um etc um yes yeah 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 if someone cloned it they'd pull down your env file and they'd see all your passwords yeah so so definitely do not do that no yeah if you put it on the get and ignore it'll never put it on on github.com so when they clone it, it won't be there. That's why you put it in the git ignore. That's exactly right. All right. All right. So that's the basics of .env.